The $1.5 billion Southwest Light Rail Transit Project that goes from Minneapolis to Eden Prairie continues to be in the news. City Council member in Hopkins, Cheryl U. Joaquin, is her city's chief point person on the project, and she is a member of the Southwest LRT Project Corridor Management Committee. Now that's the panel of mayors, city council members, county commissioners, MnDOT officials, and Met Council members that recommended a project scope and budget to the Met Council. Now here is Jeff Strait with Hopkins City Council member Cheryl U. Joaquin. We're very excited. We do have three stations coming into our town of 17,500 and some. The stations are on Blake Road, on 8th Avenue just south of Excelsior, and then also if you imagine 17th Avenue, Excelsior Boulevard, where the Hennepin Tech Center is, they're going to extend 17th up to where the trail is, and that's where the platform is going to where be. Where the, the, the regional bike trail. Yes. So what's going to happen in that area? Well, that area, they're calling it the Shady Oak Station. Originally, we shared it with um, Minnetonka, and we still look at it as a whole regional development with Minnetonka. Currently, they're looking at that for a surface parking lot of 500, and just south of that, there'll be the operations and maintenance facility. The operations and maintenance facility is where they wash the trains, ma maintain the trains, uh, start the drivers out on the routes. And it's going to have a lot of really interesting switches and tracks and things like that that any kid is going to just love. <laughs> but what does it mean to Hopkins' economy? Well, what it means to Hopkins is it's a quite a large site. Now, I, for those of you who don't know, Hopkins is only two by two miles. We're the smallest city in the line with the smallest population and the smallest tax base. And the operations and maintenance facility will take out five of our current businesses, close to 300 jobs and about $180,000 in tax base a year, which is, which is a hit to us. So my fellow partners on the corridor management committee from the other cities understand that everybody should be sharing the burden of this line and that the operations and maintenance facility placed an undue hardship on Hopkins. So they have been very helpful. Minnetonka, Edina, Eden Prairie, St. Louis Park, Minneapolis, understanding that and trying to find ways that we can help mitigate that with redevelopment potential and other sites on our in our city. Do you think your three stations are, are, are going to help spark redevelopment then? Yes, I do. I think it will help help speed up redevelopment. They're in areas that we've always looked to redevelopment. We had an East End study a decade ago on what we'd like to see around Blake Road Corridor and we've already put things in motion there. We have a Pizza Luce there. We have the Watershed District putting a regional park and taking over Atlas Cold Storage for redevelopment and cleaning up the creek. So development was still going to happen, but I think this will help speed up that development. Now the 8th Avenue station is also referred to as uh, the downtown Hopkins yes. station, right in front of the big Honda uh, dealership. It's just south of Excelsior Boulevard, right by 8th, where currently there is a park and ride for a bus that will be taken out for a plaza and it's thought to be a very large regional connection for people biking to the station, taking buses to the station, and their lingo is a kiss and ride where people drop their... A their, kiss and ride? Yeah, so that it's, means it's, you say goodbye to your wife or yes. husband, kiss them goodbye, they go off to work on the LRT and they come back. Yes, and they're... And have an argument maybe. <laughs> And they're also expecting a lot of people to be walking to that station. However, isn't it going to be a challenge for pedestrians to get across wide, broad, trafficy Excelsior Boulevard to this new station? Yes, and we've actually been planning for that as well. We just got a grant to develop something called the Artery, which we're looking at 8th Avenue to be an extension of our Main Street and have an exciting development there, starting with the Clute project that's going to be opening next spring, which is 153 um, higher-end department units with active uses on the main floor, kind of live workspace. Mm -hmm. So when people get off the station at 8th Avenue and stand in this plaza that we want to construct and look across and say, what's happening over there? I want to go check that out. Tell us a little bit about how uh, people who live in the Minnetonka Hopkins area have been involved in planning stations. Well, the project office has really led the way. They've had a lot of open meetings and open houses. We've worked with Hennepin County and station area plans where we've had citizen um, advisory committees and business advisory committees. There's been a lot of time for community input. But 
things are still midstream in the planning uh, process, aren't they? Yes, the station areas are set, but we're still planning and how they will look. Explain what's going to happen for people like me. Well, the Corridor Management Committee did management take a vote and make a recommendation to the Met Council the of process. where the line should be, where the station should be. The Met Council then has to take a vote and to for finalize the project. That has yet to happen. That was put on hold. Once the Met Council does take a vote, that starts a 45-day comment period for the public to have more input. And then we'll have open houses again through our, each city so that we can have final community input on the station areas. And then municipal consent is where the council will be voting. Each council in each city will be voting on their one little section. So whereas the Corridor Management Committee looked at the line as a whole and brought their ideas from their cities to the table, but we were supposed to put on our kind of regional thinking caps and look at the line as a whole. Now this is a process where each city can individually look at the aspects that are affecting them and then take a vote. That's interesting. I think the, the process is, I think, open. And it's very confusing to a lot of people because there are so many committees, so many different levels of discussion. But I think in the long run, it, it's probably going to work, don't you? I hope so. It's been a, a long haul with a lot of input and a very collaborative process and a very open process. For more on light rail station planning, visit southwesttransitway.org. That's southwesttransitway.org. You've already seen him in the show, and we use the name Jeff Strait a great deal. So as the man with your finger on the pulse of virtually everything that ever happened in the universe, yeah. what else is going on for us here in Minnesota, especially with light rail? Well, with light rail, a couple of things. One, uh, the governor, of course, has uh, put off uh, decision-making for about three months so they can explore all the options regarding the relocation of rail if needed. Okay. Is also, that a good thing? I think it's... A lot of people don't think more studies are going to be needed, but it's going to give people in Minneapolis time to figure out, oh, I guess they have been doing a lot of good work on this. Okay. Now, also, the Met Council and the project, the Southwest Light Rail project, they're going to do uh, a little bit more, maybe much more, in terms of engaging the rest of the public to uh, make sure everyone in all five cities and at the Hennepin County are on board, understand everything. That's a good thing. It is. Now, many people read the November 3rd Star Tribune article on the LRT. It was written by uh, Pat Doyle. Uh, Mr. Doyle found out that some of the founders of this anti-LRT movement in the Kenilworth area are major DFL donors, including advertising executive Lee Lynch and Jim Smart. Uh, they were among those who were supporting keeping LRT out. We gotta remind ourselves that these folks speak only for a standalone swath of Minneapolis, not the rest of that city. Now, you can bet your place in the Aquatennial Parade that Mayor-elect Betsy Hodges and Transportation Finance Committee Chair Scott Dibble and Frank Hornstein, who represent the Kenilworth area in the state legislature, find these swells persuasive. And also there was that strong editorial in the Star Tribune uh, taking to task the anti-LRT people in Kenwood. Folks, they say, are ignoring the rest of the region. It's good as a decision will be made. We have to keep moving forward. We are in desperate need of light rail. We are. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Democratic Visions is handcrafted by volunteers through DFL Senate District 48, Eden Prairie, and Minnetonka. Sharon Boreen, Chair.